Welcome to the Inspired Evolution and guys, it is such a yummy treat to be here today with Benny Ferguson. Benny, how are you? Very well, thank you. It's good to see you, man. It's good to be here. Uh, Brother, it is such a treat to have you. For those tuning in to Benny for the first time, look, uh, anything movement related, like I could sit here and go yoga, qigong, martial arts, I could sit here and just go movement, 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 movement practice, and it will all sum up into what he's offering to the world which is such a blessing. I personally have had friends that have had ski accidents, have had uh, debilitations, lifelong debilitations that have then come back and found greater levels of mobility, access in their body, freedom in their body, thanks to the just the support that Benny offers them. So Benny, a movement monk. <laughs> it is such a treat to have you here today. Thanks so much, man. It's great to be here. Hey, I want to dive super deep, super straight from the outset. Um, a movement monk, like one of the things that I've learned from the Inspired Evolution podcast is oftentimes it's our greatest challenges in life that become our greatest offerings and gifts to the world. Um, what were some of the challenges you've had with movement in your life that have inspired you to be the movement monk? Yeah, for me, like a big moment of, I suppose I would call it awakening of uh, awareness of the just the beauty and the value and the importance of the body uh, was when I I had quite a big spinal injury that then developed into spinal scoliosis. So for people who aren't familiar with that term, it was sort of like uh, my spine was like in a plumbing S bend under your sink. Oh, um, yeah. So and before that, like what that contrasted with was. I was pretty, you know, physically active as a kid. You know, I always liked to do stuff, ride bikes and motorbikes and skateboard and play sports and all this sort of stuff. And then pretty much overnight, it was difficult to stand, to breathe, to walk, like all these things that you just think, oh, I can do that. And um, so so that that was the big confronting moment that was very humbling and that sort of started me on the process and I just asked well how can I be free with this you know and then from this and yeah so so that was a a big big challenge and blessing now it's something that Mm. I feel very very thankful for because it's um when I work with other people with all sorts of stuff going on like I've I've had my own experiences and there's some compassion there for what can happen in the process of uh, shifting that experience as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And so I, there's, there was a clear little thing in there that you shared, which is how to live, how to go with this and then to move, like how to go, like how to, where do I go from this? Um, yeah. Is it like, Let's talk because I know that when we talk, like just that's alluding to just I know that there's so much that is psychologically involved in um, the way we we approach um, not just our challenges but also the the freedoms in our body. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like the psychosomatic human body relationship that we we inhabit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can comment on my experiences definitely. Mm. Um, so like. Uh, Along the way, like I, I tried to get myself out of where I was uh, with just a physical rehab clinical type approach of, you know, you strengthen this muscle, you stretch that muscle, and then theoretically the body should come back into alignment. But then mm-hmm. I realized there was this other thing that was uh, the software um, that was controlling the, the, the hardware, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. the software being, being my mind and the hardware being the body. Great metaphor, it, yeah yeah, they had two different conversations going on, you know? Mm. And uh, so my mind was like, there was a lot of emotions and, and thoughts and all of that sort of thing. Like even just the judgment that I'm not capable when I was Mm. like that then affects the nervous system, which then reflects into the body. So I sort of see like the whole somatic reality of the the mind and the body is the body is a wonderful reflection 
of what's going on with the mind. And, and that's where I find working through the body as a wonderful tool now. So then we can, cause it's really easy to, you know, pardon the French to bullshit ourselves and kind of create all sorts of different illusions and nothing wrong with that, but it can put us on a cycle where we're like, Oh, why do I come back here again? Over mm. and over and over. But then the body is just a wonderful reflection to show us and say, well, there's something to be looked at. And if we can listen to that, then we can start to really connect with who we are. Mm. And, um, you know, like what, what we're here to do, like what is um, a harmonious moment for us and then to continue to carry that forward. Mm. And, um, yeah. I love that. So let's, let's uh, if I can make it a little bit more practical. So one of the things that I consistently find challenging for myself is my hips are tight. Right. And I find it that when I go to try and touch my toes, it's like some days it's better, some days it's worse, but like it's consistently, okay, my hips are tight. So the the offering from this conversation is that there's actually like emotional things that are locked in, in there that I'm, that I'm holding onto. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, potentially, you know, like it's, you know, and there's, there's a lot of different um, perspectives out there with like, you know, the hips mean these emotions and the back means these emotions, ah. the ankle means those emotions. And um, if, if someone's like seeing that sort of stuff, you know, so some people could say like your feet are your point of stability. And if you've got challenges with your foundations and all that sort of stuff, you might have mm-hmm. stuff going on with your feet. And mm-hmm. I, I don't like to um, oversimplify things that much one (laughs) one thing that i just like to honor that the fact that the mind and the body is the same thing you know Mm. like i talk a lot about the mind body connection but it just really at a deeper level it's it's more the mind and the body are the same thing Mm. it's it's all interconnected i don't know where it starts and i don't know where it ends (laughs) so say for example you know in the case of the hips instead of having a narrative like ah it's about emotions or it's about physical tightness or whatever, if we can go in, you know, like in any stretch, for example, like a a stretch is a wonderful metaphor, Mm. you know, it's like here, here I am and here I'd like to be. And the stretch is the space to get you there. And, but that space is a really precious zone because, you know, we can overstretch and when that happens, there's, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, (laughs) you know? So like, it depends on then our intent as we go into it. So if we can go into, let's say areas that are tight with the body with an intent of innocent inquiry, then we might start to notice, ah, when, when I go into this space or when I stretch this way, I feel this way or my breathing is affected this way. And we keep watching. Mm. And ultimately I find it's useful to go beyond emotion and to really connect with what's the energy of the situation and that can right. be a bit ambiguous for some yep. but en- energy is like a, a blank canvas and we interpret it and with meaning in my experience and then emotions form and all sorts of different things. So if we can watch it and go, as I'm going into this stretch, the energy is sort of fearful or whatever it is, then like, what can we do to work with that? Like, where does that come from? Because mm. the interesting thing with the somatic memory of the body is that seeds can be planted in our consciousness that are affecting the body way, way, way back into the past and um, not to challenge anyone's beliefs. And this is actually something that's continued to surprise me as we do work where we're observing the body. Sometimes people end up in different spaces in time that are not reflective of this physical life. Mm. And I don't know what's happening necessarily in either of the day, but you know, like they could be a different gender. They could be a, a different person in a different time. That's mm. like, why is this coming into my consciousness? Right. And all these things can have effect in the body. Mm. And so it can go really deep, but mm. I just generally say, just start where you start mm. and then just continue to listen. And there is an unfolding process that we can go on to really get to the seed of what is in the consciousness and how is that being reflected through the body so then that might be manifesting as tightness in the hips for this Mm. example Mm. yeah i love it thank you so much for sharing that and so you talk about an unfolding process is there a bit of a bit of a journey that is like 
that the individual kind of goes on when they come to a movement monk. I know you mentioned the innocent inquiry. So do we, you know, just inquire and find, you know, what comes out for us? Um, or is there a bit of a, you know, not one shoe fits all, but sort of like, okay, like start with the inquiry and then go somewhere else with that. Is there a bit yes. of a... Yeah, yeah. Like um, over the years, I've just noticed there's, it's, it's a deep well, you know, when we mm. start to explore the body and it can be quite um, debasing, you know, when someone starts to look within the body is because there can be a lot of stuff there, mm. you know, particularly if, you know, maybe we've come to our adult life and challenges have been shown to us enough where we then take a moment out of the busyness of life to self inquire and go, Oh, what's happening. And there can be a lot of stuff, you mm. know, uh, like a, a sort of like the, the paparazzi kind of building up outside your window and then you open the door and they're like, oh, da, 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 like that. Like <laughs> it can be quite overwhelming. So I, I've kind of picked apart a couple of different um, or five different building blocks over the years. And <laughs> I, I use these as sort of like a, a, a modular process because mm. everyone has a different ratio or need based upon uh, where they're at. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> maybe I'll list them. So, and they're not in a particular order of importance, but I'll, I'll say them in a general kind of process and how I observe them when I work with people. So the first one is it's about expanding perception. So, you know, what is um, my perception of the situation that I'm in? You know, perception is our reality and the way we look at things often determines the way we experience them. So anything that's happening in the body if we were to do an exercise, this might be a useful place to start just to look at, well, how do I perceive my body? How do I perceive myself as I'm doing this movement? Mm. So that can be a really useful, it's not like this goes away, but if that, if there is a big block in the perception, then that might be something that we put really in the foreground to start. Which I think is powerful. So, Sorry to interrupt you. I think we'll yeah, just go, go through man. this, yeah. but just, just yeah, yeah. that like, cause I do identify myself as someone that's, tighten the hips let's just say right yeah t- <laughs> totally yeah yeah so, and expanding that to being like oh perhaps you know i'm not or like what is it what is possible <laughs> yeah anyway yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and that's a beautiful example yeah yeah i love that and so then um if, if we go a little further then for some people there are strong traumatic experiences emotions like I suppose blockages in the energy system mm. that are worthwhile looking at and allowing those things to flow. I don't mm. like to identify them as necessarily like the blockage that's bad it needs to be fixed, mm. but more so maybe there's something that we're doing that we we're choosing, whether we're aware of it or not, that we're holding on to it, you know, mm. and it's not necessarily about letting it go, but more so embracing it to allow it to flow. Mm. So, really um yeah allowing flowing energy is is kind of that next thing so and that can come in lots of different ways and beyond that we look at the breath so what can we do to get freedom with the breathing you know given that it's i tend to look at this hierarchy uh, sometimes of well you can go to without food for quite a bit of time Mm -hmm. um you can go that water for a bit less time but breathing uh way 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 (laughs) (laughs) so if if we look at what really sustains the body and its Mm. importance to come back to that really pivotal thing of your breathing and it can get breathing practices of becoming more trendy these days very trendy to really Mm. Yeah, but to really connect back with that essence of, well, I'm breathing, it it influences every single physiological function that I have, my 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 organs, my hormones, then the hormones affect the way I think and, and feel and all sorts of different things. It's not necessarily that linear process, but it's all interconnected. And the breathing, if we can start to become aware of that and go through a process of connecting with that, then that's a it's a really useful tool to have in your box yeah so um so like that an example of that might be you know say we're going into a movement and then we notice we hold the breath Mm. well then let's connect with the breath in that context in that situation 
because if we're holding the breath, well then the possibility, the potential of what can happen in that moment, whether that be a stretch or whether that be just standing there, it, <clears throat> it changes dramatically. Mm-hmm. So breathing, freedom of breath uh, is a useful block. Um, mm. And then we go into the movement aspects, like more um, the quality of the movement. So looking at the ease of movement. Mm. So, you know, say I'm, I'm doing a movement very common in the West that it, like achievement is a big part of our psyche and that sort of thing. Like I do this movement to get that thing. I've totally been there as well. Mm. And um, we don't often look at these qualities of like, okay, I'm not going to just try do this stretch to get more flexible. What about the ease of in which I do it? So Mm. then that starts to kind of bring you to where is the ease with what I've got right now, rather than where I'm going, like where's the ease here and now, and can I start to cultivate more of that? Mm. So focusing on movement ease as a quality is a useful thing. And then finally, this is where a lot of people start is movement capacity. So where they're looking at the strengthening and the stretching of the body and all that sort of thing, we're looking at going from where we're at to a a more expansive um, experience um, as we're moving. So I I use all these building blocks to identify kind of what's the need for someone. Mm. And then there might be a movement that they're working on. There might be a situation So then we can go, ah, let's look at this movement through the lens of perception or through the lens of breathing or through the lens of emotion or through the lens of ease and the quality, like as you're physically doing it or then the capacity of it. And it gives us a really um, expansive toolbox, but an ability to personalize. Mm. And I I like to impart these blocks to people so then they can kind of become the master of their own body as much as that's an ongoing sliding scale. But um, yeah. So talk to us about the sliding scale because it's, it is something that is uh, like our relationship with our body and maybe just reflecting on your relationship with your body. It's something that continues to mature over time, continues to surprise. Um, And I guess just reflecting back into my own journey, like strength and stretching has been a big part of um, a big part of what's going on. But one of the biggest things I'm taking away from today's conversation is yes, breathing has been a big part of my meditation practice, Um, But people have made the case for actually like taking time out to just conduct like actual breathing exercises with yourself. Um, And then also I think uh, why this conversation is, is even just like energetically happening between us (laughs) is I'm coming more and more to mobility, just this conversation around mobility, which was for me, what you tucked into ease of movement. Um, I sort of openings myself up to mobility, but in terms of, that journey, how it's just like a continuation. Um, I think just before we go into making it hyper-specific, um, like your journey continues to evolve and inspire. What inspires you to continue on this journey around these five pillars? Like, is it always, do you find something, oh, like there's a bit deeper to go here or maybe this is something novel here? Like, what's your process look like? Um, yeah, look, I, I love continuing to disprove my assumptions <laughs> and, and and notice where I have them. Um, like for me in the beginning, I was like, I really want to know stuff. And, and now I just, I just find it great joy in discovering things that I, I didn't know, you know? And so it's like a continual discovery process. And to me, the thing that I love about working with people is that every time you connect with someone, you get these two different maps converging and that's a really, really wonderful space to discover new things about someone else and also about yourself. Mm. And um, so, so for me, like that, that really continues to inspire me, that kind of reciprocal process of growing together. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I love that. And so let's talk a little bit about um, that journey of uh, like, in, like the, the thread between uh, all of those five different pillars um, because there is definitely a can uh, I call them pillars modules <laughs> you can call them whatever you like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's how I think um, but yeah in there um, there is definitely an interconnectedness amongst all 
three or all five of them, right? Like there is one bleeds into the other. So expanding yes. my perception then has a direct impact on my energy systems. And then, you know, look, that would support me in terms of, okay, maybe this is bigger than me. And so I can let it flow, you know, and I don't have to hold, um, or yes. yeah. Can you t- describe that a little bit? Yeah. Before? Yeah, totally. Totally. It's like the way I see it is it's sort of like a, a song, you know, like a song has different parts. Mm-hmm. It has different, different notes and, and depending on like everyone needs a, uh, we all I think have had a song at times that have just changed our lives, touched mm. our hearts. Yeah, you know, like so for some people that might be like a a heavy rock song. Other people it might be a more trance kind of dance <laughs> type song or whatever. It's just like in that moment, this is the song that I need. Mm. So I sort of see these things as the same as like at the end of the day, it's all music, you know, mm. it's, it's all the body, it's all the mind, but then we can start to look at, well, what song do I need to turn the volume up on? What type of music do I need to turn the volume up on at a given time? Mm. And that can then allow us to just focus on what, what get cl- as close as we can to what is our highest need in that moment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's ultimately what it's about is someone using these tools to discern their highest need. So, you know, maybe today I go into a stretch and I'm feeling a bit tight. You know, maybe I've done some stuff yesterday and I'm feeling a bit tighter as as a result. So maybe on this day, I don't need to push for that capacity. Like what's the furthest I can go. Maybe it's better for me actually, if I keep listening to just focus on uh, what ease have I got and then, as I go into it, maybe then the body will start to open up and become receptive. And then maybe I'll shift into more capacity work, you mm. know, or maybe there's something that's happened, you know, like life's always changing. You had a, a disagreement or something like that. And there's an emotion that's kind of there in your body. You know, mm. if we then go do physical exercise with that stirring away and not honoring that it sort of, it creates that, that inner resistance and I like to see it as if there's anything within us that's like a handbrake Mm. on you know it's like I've done this (laughs) more times than I'd like to admit (laughs) you drive in the car and you're like for a couple of moments why is this what what's happening to my car it's so (laughs) sluggish it's moving and then you're oh my god realize I've got the handbrake on so you know like if if we can get to that space where we're, we're using our bodies, moving our bodies, working with our bodies with that internal handbrake off, then it just makes the process a lot more graceful. That's such a great metaphor. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. It's hilarious because, yes, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that came up for me, and I, and I know that this may be a bit of a challenge because each individual is a, yeah, is just, I don't know. How do I say it without getting super spiritual? (laughs) But it's a miracle of creation, really. (laughs) Each individual is unique. We've all got our own, um, yeah, makeups and and things. And it's it's almost fascinating that we're all like snowflakes. There's no two of us that are the same. Um, But one of the questions, just from a a place of wanting to add interest, uh, add add value to the listener, um, and Mm. also just from my curiosity, do you see certain things that keep popping up? Um, and when I say certain things that keep popping up, I'm a hyper conscious, the fact that you're in the West and I'm in the West and we live in this Western Australian environment. Um, mm. perhaps, you know, just the lifestyles that we live, you know, some people were a lot, very, very many of us are desk oriented. Um, do you see like similar patterns or similar challenges emerge? Um, I'm not saying it's a gross generalization. Perhaps it's just something that appears from the environment and the way we're structured. Do you see certain things that emerge? I do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's that balancing act between seeing, I suppose the infinite uniqueness that we all have Mm. and the fact that we are also part of a society that has certain cultural conditioning Mm. and um, like we've all been subjected to that at some level. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there are similarities that I notice and it's like, particularly like one big similarity for people that, um, come into my space for support and that sort of thing mm-hmm. is, is safety. 
and uh, you know, like when I when I look at there's a, there's a couple of you know when I went through uh, different kind of um, meditation, mindfulness trainings, NLP, all of those sorts of different things. I don't like to give them too much weight because it's just mm. like a speck in a, a massive beach, mm -hmm. a speck of sand in a massive beach. But like looking at a couple of core he human needs that tend to come up a lot um, is around safety, around belonging. So, um, and that can start to manifest like, all right, I don't feel safe in my experience. Well, it might not say it like that, but it just, it might induce that kind of fight or flight um, mm. sympathetic response. So it's, it's very, it's a common thing that I notice that a, a lot of people are in a sympathetic state in that kind of excited nervous system state. Mm. Um, and it, you know, it's no one's fault. Like, look at the environment around us. Like, even just a text message going off, like, bing, you know, like this, this stimulus, those radio mm. waves, there's all sorts of, you know, electromagnetic frequencies, all these things. And then our, our work lifestyle habits and the nature of, like, the like economic system and how we've got to earn money to live and all these sorts of different things. So we focus, 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 and, and really put our, our minds on this thing, but then neglect what can neglect what's really happening. Mm. So, um, and a, a lot of people have been brought into that society as the norm. Mm. And it's, it's sort of like a fish where you're in water. Like, I don't know whether a fish has a concept of I'm swimming in water, you mm. know, just maybe like we don't really think about I'm moving through air, mm. you know, it's just there. Yeah. And um, yeah. The culture escape. Yeah. 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 And so when you say, like, I think it's really profound because I was, and just to flag to the listener, I was thinking of something like, yep, you know, people have neck issues because they're at the desk or people <laughs> have hip issues because they're sitting a lot. And I know, um, actually, before I forget, uh, you know, but actually, no, let's tie off what I was saying. And then let, let me forget. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> um, the the you you touched on like almost like an essence of a or like of an in, of an intention rather than like a symptom which was safety yes yeah that's tell us more about like intentions a little bit in there i guess is there is there a bit yeah. of yeah did you touch into that quite deeply then yeah yeah like an intention you know like in when you look to chinese medicine and that sort of thing like i i, I love to look into different um, philosophical constructs, different cultural constructs, like um, China. It's just uh, you know I'm not a Chinese-born person, so like I'm like scratching the surface and mm. finding gold, you know. Yeah. And but like there's there's a saying in um, Chinese medicine: the qi follows the yi. Mm. So like qi, kind of the, the the it's not necessarily the energy in my experience, but the the structure that um, follows the energy mm. uh, so like that the yi the, is the intent so mm. you know it's kind of the western term maybe is like what we focus on grows you know, yeah where your focus goes your energy goes that sort yeah. of thing so so why i kind of put forward that safety piece uh, and rather than going into oh people come with neck things and all that sort of stuff is i don't like to give that too much energy like yes it's important and yes mm. we need to look at it but if someone say for example is fundamentally feeling not safe because maybe something strong has happened in the past that is then taking them out of being able to focus inside their body for mm. a sustained period well then all other things often are symptomatic of that you know like just a, a general sense of feeling the body like i often say if you can listen to the whispers then the body doesn't need to scream mm. so you know that coming back to that safety if if we're not feeling safe then often we're not focusing inside the body not able to feel what's going on so then the body needs to talk louder with these louder symptoms mm. so that that small kind of sense of disease in the body then can start to then manifest into more hard physical things and um, so I like to get to the source cause of things rather than just, oh, you've got this back pain, which is a really common thing, you know, like most people in the West have experienced back people, back mm. pain at some point in their life. But I think we need to look a little bit deeper than the symptom. Right. Is the intention. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And I think um, 
yeah i think there's a there's a whole conversation that is available to us in that space which is you know where do our intentions or how much did we actually intend uh, here we go how much did we intentionally set our intentions ourselves as opposed to pick them up and i think this is what you were alluding to before in terms of you know culture has programmed some of the ways that we live for us and we haven't really questioned that we've just accepted that as the norm and this is a fish in water right Totally, totally, yeah. And like, we're all individual beings. Mm. Like, we we don't know what lights us up till we discover it. <laughs> and um, you know, like using intention is just a tool of of bringing things into consciousness. Mm. You know, and like it's a little fun science experiment sometimes, like a hypothesis. <laughs> you know, like my my intention is to explore peace in mm. conflict. <laughs> mm. You know, because it's there you know and then as you do that then you, you start, start this process of of discovery uh, which is i just find really potent and powerful just to bring anything into consciousness you know i love the body bring mm. that into consciousness if my intention is to connect with my body more deeply then that will send me on a path on a wonderful path and the challenge is is to to sustain some degree of gentle focus toward mm-hmm. that intent and allow an unfolding process to occur because distraction is uh, a real challenge these days. Yeah, definitely. It's well yeah. cultivated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> yeah, we definitely read what we sow. Um, so in that, let's, let's have a chat about, um, okay, if we've, if the intention that is underlying and we haven't chosen it and it's, and it's safety that is challenging us, um, what are some things that we can like, obviously I know, you know, when you're in that sympathetic state, the breath can be really powerful. Um, but you know, what tools would you like to offer those people that are interfacing with that safety intention so deeply? Yeah. Yeah. So like in, I, I have a process um, that I take people through called break through your pain mm. and what, where that starts is in, in deeper questioning. Right. So, um, what I like to look at, like one of the first questions is, is can I respond, not react to the sensations of my body? Mm. So to make it really simple, like a response, um, in my perspective is just a, a conscious choice where a reaction is often something that's happening unconsciously that we, we didn't necessarily choose in that moment. It's not necessarily about being controlling, but it's just about doing our best to, to choose what's right for us in each mm. moment. So, you know, it it might be just standing there, sitting there, laying there, walking, whatever movement is simple enough that we can just bring presence to what's happening rather than getting distracted on all of the sensory input that's happening. It might just be starting off by, by observing the body and then just observing whatever comes up and to practice responding to that. Ah, I've got pain. Reaction might be, take a painkiller or stretch the shit out of it or (laughs) Mm. whatever it is, you know, and then being able to look at it and go, okay, what, what are you saying to me? And you might not know straight away because there's this wonderful gap between awareness and then trailing behind it comes perception. Mm. So often when we do that, like we become aware of things and it's like, Oh God, there's a lot of stuff here. And no wonder I didn't want to connect with my body. No wonder I didn't feel safe because there's so much stuff here and just by becoming aware of it, it feels can sometimes perceptively feel worse. Mm. So, but then if we continue on, on just as a basic simple practice and like, I love to just focus on simplicity, especially Mm. at the start, simple things that you've got. Yeah. Yeah, I was just sorry. I was just remarking. I was smiling because it's like the simplicity is actually mastery is one of the things that I've learned again and again on my journey. Totally. Yeah, and it's like I think it was Da Vinci or something that said simplicity is the ultimate complexity, mm. and it it really is true, um, in my experience. So yeah, so I, connecting with the simple things like the duh, oh my god, I can't believe I didn't focus on that things. Mm. It, like often and this here's maybe another common thing in the west like we tend to make it harder than it needs to be (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and Speak you can for yourself. Sim- <laughs> <laughs> I am I am part of the way. <laughs> I am part of the way. <laughs> uh, me three. <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, like if we can pare it down, pare it down, pare it down, because sometimes if it's if it seems easy, it's like is that going to be of value? Mm-hmm. And th- these things, like the further and further I go down the path that I've chosen, um, the more simple it gets. And the more I'm like, oh God, you were really trying really hard. To, and it was all there right in front of you all along. And um, that, that's a beautiful gift to mm-hmm. realize that, oh, you don't need to do so much. It's more about like, it's a more being situation mm-hmm. than a doing situation. Yeah, that's profound. I love that. Yeah, the whole ethos of being, then doing, then having. Whereas, yes, I know we we have this very uh, a collective perception in many cases of let's. I want to have this, so I'm going to go do that, and then be will follow. You know. Yeah, yeah, and like the be is often like a product of will. You know, like particularly you see a lot of people talking about the hustle and, you know, like (laughs) really kind of carving these strong mindsets and and all that sort of thing. And beneath that, there is this, this being Mm. that doesn't require any effort. Mm. Just there. You mentioned the word hustle, Benny. And so let's, I'd like to sort of just pick at that for a quick sec, which is, you know, oftentimes um, I've had this in some of my coaching calls and I'm mostly like, life coach, mindset, performance and alignment and purpose and fulfillment kind of oriented individuals. Mm. So, um, but oftentimes I find people's bodies are then like people's bodies communicate to them. Like, and for them, it's quite shocking and surprising because it's like the first time. Right. Um, they're like, I, I'm just, I I need to stop. You know, I just, uh, my body's telling me to slow down. My body's telling me to sleep 14 hours a day at the moment. Um, and I'm just going to do that for like, I don't know, like, and then they get nervous that they're slipping into depression or something because it's the first time the body's mm. communicating them to slow down and they're like, whoa, like, what am I slipping into? Will I ever come out of this? Is this what depression is? And it's like, no, it's just your body communicating to you. Like, your body has infinite wisdom. It's connected to all the molecules that makes everything, you know. Um, but I think the the conversation I'm trying to allude to is, you know, the the wisdom of the body and the potential burnout of the mental um, and how we can push the mental into burnout, but then the body is consistently holding us accountable and has that infinite wisdom to bring us back. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, if you just look at, like, say, one big part of the, the hormonal system of the body, the adrenal glands, mm. you know, like when the mind's burning hot, you know, we've got that kind of fire going, like it, it burns fuel, it burns sugar. You know, mm. the adrenal glands secrete, you know, cortisol and all sorts of, I don't like to bombard with too many different specific things because there's so mm. much we don't know about the body as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, like, let's just look at that one situation of if that muscle has been, you know, like you're running on a track and that muscle has reached lactic threshold, you know, like mm. your muscles are so burning that they can't even contract anymore. Mm. Well, you, what do you do? Do you keep running and eventually you get to a point where you can't you know systems start to give up you don't even have the choice anymore Mm. you know but the the wonderful thing though is that you know this reminds me so there's a a place called the eco village um down from where i live Mm. and um it's a beautiful place they've got like a market there and they've kind of built the community into um, uh, more the natural landscape. The kangaroos are still there. They haven't left. Ah, Where in, no. you know, it's it's a lovely place to go. And there's this beautiful tree there. And I just look at the tree, and I, I don't know whether you have that experience where you just some trees just have this presence. All, all trees have it, but some in particular, you Guilty. look at it and you're like, oh, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. And there's there's this tree like that, right? And for a long time, I see people playing and, and interacting on the tree and getting photos in front of the tree. And it's like a beautiful thing. And, but the tree was, is starting to lose its vibrance or something. Mm. Uh, I was just watching that over time. Mm. And I was really, 
it was really wonderful. I went back a little while ago and then they've sectioned off around the tree and then they've composted around the roots and all of that sort of thing. They've got a little sign and saying, you know, like your body, the tree needs rest too, mm. you know? And so please let it rejuvenate and just give it some space. And, you know, so like all living things kind of go through these wonderful cycles of activity and rest. And um, if we can pick our own mm. and, 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 and if we have been burning the iron hot for some time, it, it might, the pendulum might need to swing back the other way. And, but then it, it, that can also be a, a, a magnetizing, you know, with every act there is momentum as mm. well. So, and this was maybe similar when I had my spine stuff going on, mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. And so for a long time, I started then to develop more lethargy Mm. and getting out of the couch, you know, was uh, out of bed was, uh, it was like a feat of, of willpower. Mm. But then I needed to just find the midpoint of how can I bring restfulness into the acts that I'm doing? So then it didn't have to be that division of yin and yang. It was a more convergence of within this yang activity, more kind of, external physical activity i can find the yin i can find the replenishment or within that yin when i'm rejuvenating and resting i can find that activity so then my body can start to heal uh, i suppose at a more graceful way Mm. so um, i find that that's maybe a useful thing and that might help people not just fully go to one side or the other but find uh, the balancing counterpart um, to support them on their own journey Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about lethargy because I know um, I, just to have an open candid exploration with you, yeah. I believe that sometimes when we interface with lethargy, it's, I believe that, you know, inspired evolution, inspired also means in how, like uh, infusing spirit into uh, like letting spirit animate your evolution. Right. Yeah, totally. um, and so I, harbor this belief and you know i can choose my beliefs and i've chosen to believe this um that actually if i'm aligned with what animates me that life force that that spirit right in that space then it's i'm being animated by a certain element of grace some would call it higher power i don't like to call it higher power because it seems like there's a distinction between this and that um But uh, yeah, I'm trying to find words to articulate it. I think yeah, you get it. Um, I hear you. Yeah, so in that, I find that I'm convinced that from that place, it's touch wood. Um, unlikely that you're going to interface with as many challenges when you're that deeply aligned to the activities that you're participating on a day to day. For me, that's my conversation around purpose. That's the impetus for purpose. The moniker that I basically brand, like have branded on my heart and everything I find I'm sharing with the inspired evolution. Big reason why I've got you on is, you know, for me, health and purpose, I feel like they're the same thing. Like I actually fundamentally totally. believe that. Like if you're on purpose, you'll find yourself healthy. But if you're off purpose, all these things like, you know, your perception's limited, you're contracted, your energies get stuck, you know, you, you, you normally like, you know, you don't move as freely. And so mm. I think I'm just trying to ask questions around, you know, what's your understanding in and around that? Yeah. Well, like that kind of circles back around to like that handbrake conversation that we were talking mm. about earlier, you know, like if we're, living in a way that deep down within us, that aspect of, you know, maybe our spirit then says, "Uh -uh, this is, this is not right for us. Mm. We're we're on a path that, you know, like, you know, you, you maybe that job or that relationship or whatever, maybe it's not even the job. Maybe it's the relationship with the job. You know, maybe it's not even the relationship. Maybe it's the relationship with the relationship. But, mm. but something is not in alignment. Mm. Then that can then cause this kind of conflict between the, like the, the rational reasoning kind of aspect of ourselves and then I suppose the more knowing wisdom. Um, Gnosis, yeah. Uh, unlimited aspects of ourselves. Mm. 
and and I think that's part of the challenge and part of the fun <laughs> of you know of of going ah oh, yes all right uh, I feel there's a resistance to this act you know and it could be as simple as like even when you're you have a sense of purpose like I can totally relate with you of like I get up in the morning and like this is something my heart's in <laughs> and at times I have these tasks that I put off, mm. you know, of just like, Oh, there's, there's this thing. And I put that off and I make this big story around it. And I put all this energy into, <laughs> you know, and often yeah. that's an opportunity for me to connect with, I suppose, um, really like how I go about it, what lights my heart up about this thing that maybe I don't logically enjoy, mm. uh, you know, like doing my taxes, you know, um, <laughs> I, I de- delay these things and put these things off and I'm like, okay, how can, how can I kind of do the things that are in alignment with me and find other people who love doing those other things as well. And then we work together mm. and um, yeah, so that's maybe just some thoughts around all of that. Yeah. I love that. And in that, like, so is it, I know this is probably a uh, gross generalization, but if we are feeling like, can we use, the body and leth- like certain ailments like lethargy or, you know, like, um, yeah, let's just take lethargy as an example as a, you know, perhaps I'm getting called into greater and greater levels of alignment. Um, and for now this is slowing me down because it's calling me to check in and see where I'm at and with what I'm going. Totally. It's totally. the handbrakes yeah, on. Like- it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's also a revealing mechanism. It's like, Hey, like the handbrakes on, Wait, what's got the handbrake on? You know, it's like, uh, okay. yes, totally. And like the, the beautiful thing about our consciousness, I notice is that it's not bound by time. Mm. So sometimes, like, we can become aware of things that might actually happen in the future, which seems a strange concept for some people. And then it's like, oh, I need to do this for some reason. And then we only realize after, oh, I'm so glad I did that. Mm. you know, and, and sometimes it is to rest. You need to conserve your energy for something that's coming. Mm. And there's just so many things that are there that we just don't always know. And this is where just you've got to, I find just do your best to listen and just check in in the moment and just like, is this right for me? Mm. And really do our best to listen. And if that is, you know, lay down and rest, or if that is go for a walk and take a breath, Mm. If that is like do a stretch or <laughs> all of those things, this, I suppose, inner guidance is, is there for all of us. Mm. And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a different way of living um, from my experience. Um, <laughs> a beautiful way. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. So on that, like what inspires you, Benny, in terms of continual exploration of your body? I know we talked about, you know, just the, the novelty of or like seeing like the somewhat um, existential, not existential, but so, like made physical. Like if I come to you with a challenge and it's like, oh, wow, like what's over there that's in me as well and how can we refine the art of supporting that and finding, you know, what's unleashing that within me? Um so where does your curiosity take you? Where does your, like, what are you, you know, consistently, like I know the simplicity is, is consistently getting dialed in. Are you finding more and more like a deeper relationship with your intuition and finding, you know, what's coming up for you or what's, what's, uh, what's being refined at your end and what's inspiring you at the moment? Yeah. Um, like the, and then <clears throat> there's a couple of different things that come up when you mentioned that. Um, like the first if, like purely physical mm. like I, I love I love stretching mm. and like I really enjoy that I enjoy it from a philosophical perspective but also a physical perspective for me to start to intentionally put myself into challenging situations and then seeing how I respond to it mm. you know like as you know growing up I suppose I've always been what I would have classified as like a tighter person mm. um you know like i would look at a dancer when i was growing up and or like a martial artist and go wow like how did how do you do that like my mm. body feels like tin man um, <laughs> by comparison you know so like stretching has continued to become um something that just always re-inspires me by putting myself on my edge 
and mm. finding the right level of doing that on a day-to-day basis and then like working with my breathing, working with where I'm at within myself. And like, so that's, that's a, a, a beautiful thing at a physical level that just continues to inspire me. Like I'm, I'm interested in what's my potential, mm. you know? And so like, I, I love doing for some people, it might be, I just want to do the splits for a purpose, but like for me, it's about like, what is my physical capacity, mm. you know? And then how does that then inform my realization of my own infinite capacity within myself. Mm. And, uh, you know, so like that, just that one physical thing is, is actually kind of becomes a bit of a spiritual practice mm. um, in and of itself, but also it's just stretching. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so that, that really inspires me. Like I love learning. I love growing. Um, I, I love that I'm discovering new things all the time about myself, about uh, just the human experience. And um, mm. like, I find that like I'm, I'm opening up more to different perspectives and, and other people. And um, yeah, maybe also like intuitive abilities have increased exponentially over mm. the years as well. Um, but it's more so like I love the process of just observing and realizing these things without willfully kind of trying to strive for things all the time. Mm. And um, like for me, just the body's a wonderful vehicle um, and I, I love moving it and I love uh, being still and, and seeing that just the, the wonder of movement that's happening inside of us all the time. And uh, so these are the things that light me up every day. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, Benny. And for those that want to tune in and find out more about Benny and, uh, yeah, just infusing the blessings of the Movement Monk into their life, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, easiest way is um, to go to my website, movementmonk.xyz. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you, we've got a whole new site now. Um, we've just upgraded everything and you can check out uh, what we do there. Um, we've got Uh, a few core offerings that you can learn about. But, you know, the first thing that I generally recommend for people is to really focus on that connection between their mind and the body. Mm. And, um, yeah, we've got a process called the Physical Freedom Challenge to support people with that. Mm. And uh, that's a great way to get in contact. I love that. I love that. One of the questions that's just been, like, infused in the back of my head just before we tie out um, is, you know, we talk about mind and body connection um, and I know that somewhere in there, there's all this space for heart. Because when I see you, I, I see a lot of heart. So I just want to ask, so, where does that all fit into it all? Is it a mind-body-heart connection? or Yeah, tell me. yeah totally. Total, like, you know, if you go back to, say, like um, hermeticism and that sort of thing, there's mm. one pretense of, of that, like a tenant that, or a pillar, uh, where it talks about mind is all, mm. you know. And so it then becomes because like what is mind is is it the, is it the brain yeah and you i've know, asked and this question so, many times i've got no answers <laughs> to, totally and like you know to 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 like to start to at least um, open up a process of self exploration to that question yeah. I, I like to look at kind of mind from three different angles so mm. like and and three different energy centers of the body so you know we've got our our gut, you know, like our, our lower center and all that sort of thing. So that that mind is kind of more survival oriented, it's more instinctive, mm. um, maybe even intuitive, um, mm-hmm. to its its own in its own way. It's kind of more survival of based. Yep. Totally, totally. It's like physical. It's kind of there. Mm. And then then we've got this this heart center, which for me is it's all about connections. It's like it's it's a wave. It's the ocean. It's it's moving. It's it's like uh, it's beyond my words mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like it's the space in between the words mm. so like and i have noticed that the more i connect with my body the more i live from that space mm. and um but then then also we've got this kind of upper center which can be kind of go from the analytical aspects of ourselves to also like the clarity and insight and um more i suppose uh, higher perceptions of, of things and like where I find my experience and when I work with people is that we kind of, we might notice maybe I spend more time in different areas, different centers, mm. um, like 
that can be uh, expressed in lots of different ways physically. Mm-hmm. Um, whether, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, maybe we spend a lot of time in that physical and so the adrenal glands associated with that center, that they're pumping, mm-hmm. you know. So ultimately an opportunity to connect with each of those minds, you mm-hmm. know, from that perspective and bring them into one. And so then just they all, you know, I see that the heart center is the, the center point of, of the, the energetic body hmm. and uh, everything connects to that just so wonderfully. Uh, so, yeah, that's just some of my kind of pulling at threads and um, just perspectives on these things. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, yeah, the energetic center conversation as, as the heart is a, is a really fun one. There's a, I'm working with heart math at the moment just to understand that a little bit deeper. And they're doing something really incredible work, just realizing the frequencies and the, the palpitations and how they are. Oh, it's, it's fascinating stuff. So thank Amazing. you so much for, for sharing so deeply, so richly, and just being one with us here today, brother. I really, really appreciate your time, your energy, your presence. Um, a big part of me feels like uh, I know that there is just so many rabbit holes we could have taken in this conversation. <laughs> so I, I look forward to discovering those rabbit holes again with you in the future at some point. But I really just want to thank you for your time and energy here today. Um, and also, you know, um, for being curious, for being playful and going on the journey with yourself to explore so much within yourself to then be able to share and support us. I know it's a life's work that informs this conversation that we're having here today. So thank you so much for that man thank you and um yeah takes one to know one yeah (laughs) and always wishing you all the best in the future bro we'll link all the show notes for those tuning in um links to benny's website the the uh, movement freedom challenge um all of that will be in the show notes for you to access and yeah uh thanks again benny really appreciate it Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave us a comment. And if you want to stay in tune for new episodes launching every Monday, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay inspired to evolve.